Welcome back. The first machine learning algorithm we'll look at, linear regression, is probably familiar to you from earlier mathematics classes. In this video, we're going to introduce foundational concepts and terminology that we'll use for other algorithms. So the discussion of linear regression will be longer than for other algorithms. Linear regression is a supervised learning technique where the target is a quantitative variable. The goal is to find a linear relationship between a target variable and one or more predictor variables. Let's look at an example here in RStudio. I'm going to use a very small built-in data set, the women data set, which we'll load with data and look at with structure. We see that it's a tiny data set, just 15 rows and two variables, which are height and weight. This code chunk also plots the data with height on the x-axis and weight on the y-axis. We drew an AB line there. Looking at this, we see that there is a very strong linear relationship between height and weight. Let's build a linear regression model with this data. We can do that, as shown in this chunk, with the built-in LM for linear model function. The first argument is the formula. So this is weight tilde height. We want to model weight as a function of height. And the second argument is specifying what data we're using. When we echo back out the model, LM1 in this case, it prints our formula and then the coefficients. We generally don't care about the intercept we care about any coefficient for a predictor variable. So in this case, the coefficient learned from the data is height of 3.45. So that means that for every extra inch of height of a person, they weigh about three and a half pounds more. We could express that in the formula, weight equals 3.45 times height minus 87.52. Previously, we've used the summary method on data. I have an example here in the console. I did a summary of the women data, and it gives us statistical information about each column. But summary is overloaded to give us summaries of models as well. As we see here, we ran a summary of our linear model one. And this is the output that we see. The first thing it does is print the formula, and then it shows the residuals. Residuals are errors the distance from a point to the regression line. These are small values from negative 1.7 to 3.11. And if we look back at our graph, we, we see that most of the points are very close to the line. This next section of the summary is about the coefficients. We have the estimated value along with standard error, t value, and a p value. The standard error is the estimate of variation. It's used to predict confidence intervals. The t-value computes the number of standard deviations the estimated coefficient is from zero. So zero would mean that there's no relationship between the predictor and the target. That's like the null hypothesis. I don't usually look at the t-values, I look at the p-values. The p-value gives us the probability of seeing a larger t-statistic if the null hypothesis is true. So we want values less than 0 0.05. In this case, we have a p-value very close to zero, and these significant codes indicate that. The coefficient section gives us statistics on the coefficients and how well they fit the data. The last part of the summary gives statistics on the model overall and how well it fits the data. First, we have residual standard error, RSE. That's in units of y about 1.5 pounds. The RSE is calculated from the RSS, the residual sum of squared errors. I've calculated that here by taking the weight, the true values, minus the fitted values, which I can extract from the model, and square those. The formula for RSE is in the book, but here I have it in code. It's the square root of 1 over 13, times the sum of the RSS. And we see we get the same number here, 1.525, as shown in the model. So why is it scaled by 1 over 13? The data set had 15 rows, and we have two variables. So that gives us 
n minus 2, 13 degrees of freedom. The r-squared statistic for simple linear regression when we just have one predictor is the same as the correlation squared. So I've computed that manually here. I've taken the correlation between the fitted values and the true values and square that to get r squared, which is 0.991, the same value that's here. The adjusted r squared will adjust for the number of predictors. Finally, we have the f statistic and a p value. For the f statistic, we want to see a low p value, which shows us the overall model goodness of fit. In this case, it looks like a very good fit. Normally, we divide our data into train and test sets. We run the algorithm on the training data and don't let it see the test data until evaluation. But since this is such a tiny data set, I'm just going to make up some test data for illustration purposes. I do that in this code block here. Then we're going to use the built-in predict function to make predictions for our test data. So the first argument is our model, LM1, and we specify what our test data is. This will create a vector of predictions. We'll be able to see that in environment. We see that we have our three predictions here. Next, we're going to use some evaluation metrics to see how well our model fit our test data. This code block computes correlation, MSE, and RMSE. The correlation here is quite bad for my made up data. Not surprisingly, we want to see a correlation as close to one as possible. So this is not a good result here. The mean squared error is exactly what it sounds like. It's the error squared and then averaged. And then root mean squared error is taking the square roots of that. The benefit of root mean squared error is that it's in units of Y. So we can see that we were almost 15 pounds off in our test data. Here I'm plotting the residuals manually just to show what they are and then we can see why our test data did so poorly because our points were very far off from our regression line. How does the algorithm learn the coefficients from the training data? It starts off with a loss function. Remember that RSS, our residual sum of squared errors, is just all of the errors, the residuals squared. We square them because some are positive and some are negative. Then we write a loss or cost function to measure how far off we are. So for one observation, our loss function for that one observation is the difference between its true y value and what the model would have predicted squared. And then we average those over all items. Our goal is to minimize the errors, and that's what this notation means. It means that we want to find the coefficients w and the intercept b that minimize our errors. So to minimize mathematically, what we can do is take the partial derivatives, set to 0, and solve. This turns out to be a lot easier in matrix notation. This is still our residual, the true value minus our parameters times the weight. The data would look like this in our women data set. We have our parameter, which we multiplied times weight, and then we have the intercept. Notice that the intercept is multiplied by one in the matrix notation. These formulas for the book show how to find the partial derivative with respect to w and solve. We start with our loss function, and we want to rewrite that square term as follows. Then we go through a few steps to multiply out and collect terms. First we bring the transpose inside the parentheses, and then we multiply out to get four terms. We can combine the two middle terms, and now we have three terms. Before we take the partial derivative with respect to w, we can get rid of the first term since it doesn't involve w. So now we're down to two terms. 
Using the rules for matrix partial derivatives, we get the following. And we can simplify this to this equation here and rearrange and solve for w. We get that our estimate for w, our w hat, is x transpose x inverse times x transpose y. Finding the inverse matrix is an O n cubed operation. So R uses optimization methods to find the parameters. R uses QR matrix decomposition, which decomposes the matrix to an upper triangle matrix, which is more easily solved. Let's take this matrix notation for our W hat and rewrite it back in algebraic notation. What we see is that we're going to sum over all of our examples the difference between the x value and the average x value times the difference in the y value times the average y value over the difference between the x value and the average x value squared. And b will actually be the average y value minus w hat times the average x value. All right, now that we're back to the safety of code, after looking at all those equations, let's look at the end result of the equations and put it in code form. So I'm letting x be the women height. This is going to be a vector. And y will be a vector of their weights. And I'm calculating the mean of each of those. So the last formula we looked at for w hat was the sum of x's minus the means times the y's minus the means all over the sum of the x's minus the means squared. And then b hat was the y mean minus the w hat times the x mean. And I printed out the values here and notice that it's the same coefficients that we got in our linear regression model. So let's close out this notebook. And remember when you quit an R session don't save your workspace because that will save all of this stuff in your environment here.